Hey there, fellow maker. Welcome to the shop. You got built today and we have an incredibly special project and video for you. You know that we love Myst, Cyan World's best selling video game all time. One of our favorites. They made a sequel in 1997 called Riven, which is arguably just as good, maybe even better. Well, they've remade that game and it's out right now. Fully 3D, you can re-explore the world of Riven, which is Deeply exciting to us. So pumped. You can grab the game right now. There'll be links down below. You can get it on Steam or good old games. You can get it on iOS or on Android and a bunch of VR platforms. Whatever way you want to experience Riven, you can do it today. We're so pumped for that. To help spread the news, Cyan Worlds has hired us to make something cool from the game. And of course, nothing more iconic than the Moyeti Dagger from Riven. There's a giant one right when you get to Riven, right behind your little prison there, and we're making it as like a ceremonial dagger type prop. This is a 3D print. I've already 3D modeled the dagger. I've printed it out. If you'd like to print your own, we'll have a link down below where you can get these files for free. Print it. You just need a quarter 20 rod going down the middle. You'll have to tap the uh, pommel and the blade to screw it in, but it's a really simple and fun print. And how cool is that? Now, this is cool but it could be cooler. I'm going to make this out of aluminum. I'm gonna put my CNC skills to the test. This is definitely the biggest and most challenging CNC project uh, of mine to date. And I'm looking forward to leveling up my skills. It's gonna be really fun. Uh, step one, of course, was to model all this. I've done all of that. And now I need to come up with some strategies for cutting all these pieces out of my stock aluminum. And I think I'm gonna start right here with the pommel. This is the pommel form that we're gonna cut out of this big honking piece of aluminum right here. I've already sliced a cookie off so that we can feed that into the CNC machine right here and cut out, I think, half of it. I think I can cut this back part of it here and then tap that hole and then use that to hold it in the lathe. And then I can do the other side on the lathe. Uh, but the first step is gonna be fire up the old Shea Poco and try and carve out this bit. Confidence is high. I'm uh, centering the machine on the center of the uh, aluminum cookie I've made here. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it's got to be pretty close. I have a little room on the edge here. So we're going to zero it. Yeah, it looks pretty good. There we go. That was about two hours worth of cutting right there. Uh, and if you're curious about the mess I made, it got just about everywhere. <laughs> I covered my PC there so it didn't get chips in it, but uh, I didn't put the vacuum on there because I wanted to film it. So this is just my mess I have to deal with now. I'm over at the lathe to do the next operation on this. Now, I had to figure out how to hold this thing, right, in the lathe. This is a much wider diameter than my lathe can handle, so I had to find some way to grab it. My idea was CNC this part, tap this part, and put a threaded rod in there, and that's what will hold in the chuck. A quarter 20 is a little thin, but I think it ought to work. Uh, next step is to tap this thing. And I'm gonna do that right on the lathe. This should ensure that things are pretty much square. Put a little cutting oil on there. And then we'll just run this flat against the chuck so that it goes in at a perpendicular angle. I've got it started now, so I'm just going to do it outside the lathe by hand. Got our thing tapped, and we've got a uh, quarter 20 bolt all mounted in the lathe. We can just thread that on there nice and tight and start taking light cuts off of this. What's nice is because of the way this rotates, any resistance will actually make this tighter. So we shouldn't have any trouble there.
That is the pommel sorted. And boy, does that look good. Oh, it feels good too. Look at that. All right, well, this piece is done until we do our final finishing on it, but let's go see how it looks on the dagger. All right, out with the old. I'll, I'll keep it for, you know, for nostalgia's sake. In with the new. Straighten that out, make sure everything's lined up. I'm thinking I'm gonna drill a locating pin so that doesn't twist, but that's a future problem. This, ooh, this looks so good. It makes it very, very heavy on one side. I don't think that's the best place to balance it, but it'll be nice once the rest of these are metal. Look at that. Look at that. I am extremely pleased with how well this turned out. Uh, let's see, three more metal parts to go. Next piece on the dagger is this hand guard, where the hand goes. And I've got a big old chunk of aluminum ready to go for that. We're gonna CNC it, and we have to do two-sided machining. I'll have to do a little bit on this side, flip it over, and do a little bit on this side, which means I need to drill holes for uh, the pins for locating it. Uh, but also, this huge spot in the middle of this circle, I'm gonna see if I can cut that out with a jigsaw so that I don't have to machine all that. It should be um, a little easier on the CNC machine to do that. So I'll drill a hole and get to cut. And we're through. Uh, well, this tiny bit of progress took way too long, so I'm just going to do the whole thing on the CNC machine. I thought I would be saving time doing this, but it's taking way, way, way longer. Let's have the robot do it. Got that piece all set up here on the CNC machine, and I'm going to cut out that middle part, fingers crossed. Because I need to cut both sides of this eventually, I've had the CNC machine cut some locating pin holes. There are also some pins in this spoil board. So once I'm done machining this side, I can flip it over and lock it right in. For those pins, I've just got some quarter inch aluminum dowels. All right, first operation is done. Took longer than I thought. I did have to cut the middle chunk out of the jigsaw and that took forever, but we got it. Uh, next thing we're gonna come in and chew away all the material on the top here that isn't our hand guard. We've got one side of this mostly cut. I'll have to come in and, with a file and clean this all up, but uh, it's time to do the other side. And this is where these locating pins are gonna do a lot of work for us. I've got the pins holes on this side and when I flip it over, I can lock it in place, and now when I come in to cut it, it should be lined up. Got both sides of this thing cut. It's time to cut it out along the outside here. Uh, normally I'd use like a contour cut, but I'm a little gun shy. I'll talk more about this later, but uh, I kept getting the bit stuck in the contour cut. And there are other ways to do that on the CNC machine. However, I own several bandsaws, so I've just drawn around the perimeter there. That's where I have to cut. I'm going to take this out and do it in the bandsaw. Ooh. We got there. This piece kind of kicked my butt. <laughs> I was mentioning how cutting this inner trench was a real problem. And this is the original piece I ended up cutting out of the middle. <laughs> Doing a contour operation with that quarter inch bit, it doesn't have any room on either side of the bit. And as it gets deeper, more chips accumulate 
until it binds up and stops. Now there are other ways I could have cut that on the CNC machine. I actually talked to my buddy Winston from Winston Makes and he gave me some great ideas. Um, but that was after I went and took a, the drill press, drilled a bunch of holes and then cut it out with a really, really cheap jigsaw. <laughs> but like I said, we got there. We were able to do that. Um, this has been an education and I'm not done. I still have more pieces to cut. So I'm sure I'm gonna learn more kind of like my uh, butterfly video. This was like my first big complicated CNC video or project. And uh, it was difficult for a bunch of different reasons. These thin wings, when I was trying to cut them on the CNC machine, were actually buckling up a little bit when I clamped it down to the board and the CNC machine was cutting right through the middle of these parts. I had to figure out a way to do that. So I learned a lot with this little delicate CNC project and now this big chunky CNC project, guess what? It is also full of lessons. Uh, and I will never forget them <laughs> because boy, it is uh, a little scary when that machine binds up, and starts yelling at you. Anyway, we've made great progress. Now I need to drill the holes. This is the hole that the threaded rod will go through. I obviously can't cut that with the CNC machine. We have to drill it by hand. And for that, I 3D printed these little jigs. It just snaps right over the end there. And then I can take my correct size drill bit and drill a hole through that'll be perpendicular like that. I'm going to make the holes bigger now until it's just big enough for this quarter inch threaded rod to go through. Looks a little cattywampus. I think my uh, jig slipped a little bit, or I probably bored out the inside of that 3D printed jig, but I think we'll make it work. And here we go. That's all we need. A nice loose fit is nice. Some wiggle room is okay with me. All right, we have another piece. To, actually, is this a top? Will this spin? No, it won't. Okay. <laughs> New metal part to replace. Um, I still have to like sand and finish this. That'll happen later. Uh, out you go. In you go. I'm going to make the final piece of this out of wood. That'll be cool. There we go. And the other side. <laughs> this is exceptional. All right, on you go. Another piece cut out. Oh yeah, all right, that looks so cool. <laughs> Next is this part, and we'll do the same thing. Cut it out two-sided on the CNC machine. Should be, should be a cakewalk, right? I shouldn't say that out loud. <laughs> I've run into enough, enough roadblocks on this project already. All right, back to the, back to the CNC machine. Time to add another piece to our dagger here. Um, I've been sanding all these parts before they go on. I haven't been filming a lot of that because the hard drives that we keep all our sanding footage on, they're nearly full. So just trust that I've sanded the crap out of these uh, and that's why I have blisters and why I'm a mess. Let's, uh, let's put this next piece on. It goes through there. And then this goes through here. And then this goes on. 
There we go. Tighten that up. Yeah. Oh, it is almost, almost there. Boy, that feels really good. I love it. All right, we have one more metal piece to make, and that's the blade. There's our blade all cut out and of course sanded. I, so much sanding, Brittany even helped. Thanks, Britt. Welcome. All right, this piece needs a hole drilled in the back of it so that we can thread this uh, rod on there. And I've 3D printed another drill guide. I do need to be careful. The last one melted a little bit and my hole was kind of cockeyed. So we'll put this on there and we will slowly and carefully drill a pilot hole and then widen it for tapping. We're gonna, we're gonna use a little cutting oil here to help us. And then very carefully, let's see here, let's do this. Take a look, make sure everything looks centered. Yeah, looks great. Now that we have our pilot hole drilled, we can make it a little wider. A little chamfer. And we can tap it. All right, I've got a quarter 20 tap for the threaded rod. I even have this little tap guide that I made to help keep it square. Time to put this threaded rod in and commit I've got some thread locker here. I'll end up putting that in there for the final assembly. But let's let's put the whole dagger together. I'm so excited. Oh, we have it. We have to do the handle still. All right, let's do the the blade first. Focus. Focus. Oh, actually that's a little long. <laughs> to trim that as well. Okay. <laughs> it's close. We're so close. I'm gonna turn the handle out of a piece of wood. I actually have an old wood lathe. I haven't used in forever. So we'll make that out of a piece of, we have some rosewood left over from the Rattler. We never used that. So I think I'm gonna use that on the lathe to make the handle. I'm also gonna trim this a little shorter. <laughs> Look at that. That rose wood turned out great. I really like that. I may not even put finish on it. It looks nice the way it is. I sanded it to like a 400 grit. All right, let's put it in the dagger. There's my 3D print. See ya. Oh my goodness, this is so exciting. The sounds are so good. Oh, also check this out, ready? I figured out how to spin this like a top. Ready. Ta-da! It's done! <laughs> I've been down here too long this week. 
<laughs> oh, here we go. Oh my goodness, that's so exciting. May have to put a pin through there to keep this top part from twisting, or maybe it's, if it's tight enough, it won't twist. Oh! <laughs> How good is that? Oh, it feels great. The handle, the wood handle. I love it. <laughs> Look at it, Brent. Look at it. It's so, it's so heavy. <laughs> where's, where's the balance on it? Can I hold it? Ooh. Yeah. Oh, it's amazing. We were just trying to figure out how we want to finish the surface on this. It's been sanded to like a 200 grit, and then I buffed it with some Scotch-Brite pads. I think I want a little bit of polish. I, th I don't want it to look shiny new, but I have some aluminum polish, I think for just the edges and highlights. We'll give that a go and see how it looks. So like the, the tip of the pommel here. Ooh, oh, yeah. And not the whole thing, but just a little polish on the edges and high spots. He says as he decides to polish the entire thing. <laughs> okay, now, see now we're talking. So that we get this nice highlight. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay, that's, I think that's what I wanted. This is not polished. This is polished. Ooh. That was, that was the right call. I really like how the, the polish looks. All those hard edges have that nice kick of light. Oh yeah. One last step, just a touch of oil paint for weathering the nooks and crannies, just like in the handle and everything, places where you know someone might be gripping it. Just some black and brown. This is gonna be really quick and very selective. I figure these grooves in the handle will accumulate some filth, right? Be a little down in there for sure. And then we just wipe most of that off. There we go. Nothing too, too out there. Just a little, little grime in the crevices, a little extra contrast. Yeah. It's just about it. It looks pretty great. Now that we're all done, there's only one thing left to do. This is gonna live at Cyan Worlds. And I can only think of one appropriate way to get there. See you on the other side. We made it we're here at cyan worlds with rand one of the original architects i'm so intrigued by the way with you know the, the black box the box and we're here to deliver the thing we made from do Raven. i have to solve a puzzle no nah, it's a very easy puzzle you just turn these 90 degrees oh okay good i like that <laughs> i wasn't in the mood for a puzzle and <laughs> here is the object oh my god there you go and we want this to be a part of the legacy here at cyan worlds and of course, behind us, we have the one made by our pal Adam oh Savage almost gosh. 30 years ago. I, that's hard to believe because <laughs> I don't, surely am not that old. So I surely. couldn't possibly be that old either. <laughs> wow. This is, Bill, this is just, oh my gosh. Yeah. I'm really excited. Oh my gosh. I love how for a video game, Mist and Riven actually have physical artifacts. It's in rare. Fact, they're down in the in the vault yeah. we're gonna go check those out in a little bit yeah uh yeah. and we're just really excited to contribute to that one oh, with man. our own this is own so thing. cool oh man i oh i wish you guys could feel <laughs> this you know it's the real thing it was man. fun it was a There's real so much detail in this oh isn't it great it was a real challenge i learned a lot making this thing i really leveled up some of my maker skills man and uh we're really happy and proud to Pass it along. Thank you so much. You We're going to have to design a few more uh, intricate things now yes. for you, if Bill. You, now that you've honed your skills. Anything new from a new game that you want us to make, you just let us know. We'd be happy, happy Perfect. to contribute. Thank you so much. You bet. This is great. We're stoked. There's a new version of Riven out to go play. 
gonna go check that out but for the rest of the day and us we're gonna we're gonna bask in this for a while thank you all so much for watching thank you Rand, for having us this is amazing Thank you to the members of our Extra Credit Club for supporting what we do. We've got a link down below to Patreon or right here on YouTube where you can join and get access to videos early. That will wrap it up from us here in Spokane, Washington. We'll see you in the next build. Ha, ha, ha.